verses 1 to 11. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the, of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him up on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Verse 8. Again, the devil taken him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And Jesus said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Verse 10. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. The last verse. Then the devil lived him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Here ends the reading. May the Lord bless his holy words. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, my King, my Maker, the all-knowing God, once again, Lord, I thank you for this great opportunity. Opportunity, Lord, that only you, Father, you have put in together, Lord, for a sinner like me, Lord, to stand and preach your words. I pray, my Lord and my God, that the truth of your word that I have accepted through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. I ask you this day, Lord God Almighty, that, I, that as I speak, after the Holy Spirit have spoken, let the words that come out of my mouth, Lord, let it, let it be acceptable by everyone, Lord God Almighty, that listens to the truth about your word. So as for us, my Lord, to make the right choice in life, so as for our salvation to be guaranteed in heaven, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' most precious name, Lord, I pray. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Um, today, as you've uh, seen the title, it says, My Choice. And uh, one thing about the Holy Spirit is this. The Holy Spirit is never an author of confusion. Most of the things that I'm about to speak about today, Sister Amen has spoken about it in the Sunday School. Some things I'm about to talk about today, Pastor James has crept into my mind to take it and, and he has spoken about it. So you see, when you have the Holy Spirit working in you, things are very easy. But it is a shame that a lot of us don't even listen. But I'm going to take you through the Bible today to be able to explain to you our choices made can actually either bless or destroy an entire generation. 
But one thing I want you to understand is this. If Christ can do it, it is very possible that we can do it as well. I always try my possible best never to fail in the spiritual. I always try my possible best. And to be able to try my possible best never to fail in the spiritual, I have got to, be, I, I have got to walk right in Christ Jesus. But uh, 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 the admin, I want you to put something on the, on the board for us, please. I'm going to read it. I mean, we're all going to read it. Then I'm going to go into the teaching. Can I have Deuteronomy 30, 19 on the screen, please? Deuteronomy 30, 19. Deuteronomy 30, 19. Thank you very much. Please, at the shout of Jesus, um apparently sorry can you put uh, 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 uh um no it's all right it's all right it's all right at the shout of jesus can we all read please jesus i call on heaven and earth as witnesses today against you maxwell that i have set before you life and death Blessing and cutting. Therefore, choose life and you and your descendants may Amen. Amen. Hold on there, hold on there. Don't mute your don't mute everybody yet. I want you to put Joshua 24 15 on the screen, please. This, I'm, going to, I'm going to revisit all these verses later on. Just because of my time, I want to put it on now. Joshua 24, 15. Quickly, please. And we're all going to read it as well. Thank you. Joshua 24, 15. At the shout of Jesus, let's read. <laughs> Jesus. And if it and is if it evil to you to serve, and if it is to serve the Lord, be sure for yourself, be for yourself, be sure 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 for Okay, these two books, Deuteronomy and Joshua, 30-19 of Deuteronomy, 24-15 of uh, 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 Joshua, speaks about choices. There are, there are two words putting together in this world that is actually destroying the world. These two words has made people to question the authenticity of the regime of God Almighty, the creator of all things. These two words had made people to look in the face of the government and tell the government that I think I am trapped in the wrong body. I think the Lord should have sent me as a woman, I do not need to be a man because everything I want to do, I do it as a female. Whereby the devil, whereby, whereby the government, that in some cases I term them as the devil, had allowed all these speeches to be taken into consideration and whereby uh, 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 allowing a law to be made that it is okay for one to change their sexes, whether you are a man, you want to change to a woman, or you're a woman, you want to change to, to a man. That it is okay for a man to believe that, you know what, I cannot, I find nothing attractive in a woman whereby I need to marry a man. They have put in this, this system of law down that yes, it is okay for a man to marry a man, vice versa, a woman to marry a woman. 
whereby allowing them to make a choice. The choices that question the authority of God as God not being a just God, whereby he allowed Sodom and Gomorrah to be destroyed because of the sins of Sodomy. All these choices that are from the pit of hell has been acceptable, acceptable by the world and especially the church. The voices of the church has been so much stuffed with the currencies of life that people intend not to speak the truth about the word of God again. There are no stands again regarding the words of God. Hunger of currencies, hungers of power, hungers of positions have allowed genuine men and women of God that have influence to turn and to stand in front of the government and say, as for me and my home, we are not going to accept this that you're throwing down our throat. No matter what amount of money, no matter what persecution that brings into it, we are standing tall inside the word of God. What is these two words? These two words is called human rights. Human rights. Human rights has opened the channel of sins to be acceptable as a legal system of living. Human rights has allowed the, the, has allowed the sinful nature of man to stand in authority of the light and say, I am right. Let me quickly take you down to Genesis 2 from verse 16. Can you please put it on the, on, the, on the screen, please? And I'm going to read. Genesis 2 from verse 16. It's only it's, it's 16 and 17. Thank you. Listen to this. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. Next one, sir, please. But of the tree, listen very well. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Choices. God has placed two trees in the Garden of Eden. One is tree of life. And the other one is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, there came a tempter that says in verse 3, I mean in chapter 3 of Genesis, that says, as indeed God told you not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I want you to underline that word, knowledge of good, good and evil. So in one tree, you have good and you have evil. And this is the one that the Lord says, thou shalt not eat. But the tree of life is only one tree that only accommodates one thing. It only accommodates the truth, the purest of truth of the word of God, the purest of truth of the kingdom of heaven, the purest of truth of all that Christ came into this world to do. But now, this conversation now of choices came instead of the woman to say yes indeed the lord says thou shalt not eat of it and walk away the bible says resist the devil and guess what it will flee oh god resist the devil and it will flee away from you so the other side of that word now is accommodate the devil and it will dwell in you. It's the difference of that now. So now, man had to eat from the, from the tree of good, I mean, from the tree, from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, whereby the eyes of man was open to one thing, one thing, and that was evil. 
So the, so, so the thing now is this. When Jesus Christ came purely from the tree of life, he made sure that he, that, that, that he, he took us to the character of the tree of life. But it is a shame now that a lot, if not 99.5% of churches now, they live and they teach in the doctrine of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, the thing is this with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. One tree. So you think that you can just move from being good and being evil. And you think it will be acceptable by God, whereby you're making choices in the light and choices in the darkness. Revelation 30, 15, 16 says, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Let me quickly explain that to you. What that is saying is this. If you, if you look, if you, if, if, you listen, if you read that verse very well, it's saying that, I mean, it's, it's saying that some people are, 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 are neither hot nor cold. But the Lord is saying, out no code, I will not, I will not, I will not spit you out of my mouth. Now, you and I know fully well that one of these hot and cold, one is being in the darkness and one is being in the light. But why would the Lord say, I will not spit you out? But the Lord is saying, the one that will spit out is the one that is lukewarm. Why is the Lord going to spit it out? Because the one that is lukewarm knows of the light. And refuse to stay in the light. So when things are, are, are good, you want to stay in the light. When things are bad, you want to stay in uh, 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 the, side of, the side of evil. That's why I said, let me know where you are. Let me know where you are. God is not a man that you can mock. There is no way you can mock God. Let me quickly go into, let me quickly pick some verses into, into, into the Bible, into the Bible reading today. It says, this, this, this is Matthew 4. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness. Just listen to that. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now, get understanding of this word now. The Spirit that led Jesus Christ into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil is not the spirit of the devil. It is the Holy Spirit that led him there. The Holy Spirit. Now, let me tell you, let me, let me touch on, on a, a wilderness. The wilderness is a place of preparation. The wilderness is a place of waiting for God's next move. The wilderness is a place of, year, of, of, of learning to trust in God's mercy. The wilderness. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that I will give to you the treasures of the darkness. If you don't pass through wilderness, which is termed spiritually as darkness, how are you going to, how are you going to take the treasures that God has for you in the darkness? But a lot of you, of course, keep making this mistake. You believe you believe that that uh, that uh, uh, when when people are facing uh, or rather going through their uh, um, their wilderness, you think yes, they have done something wrong. That's why they find themselves in the wilderness. That is far from the truth. Jesus Christ did he do anything wrong? No. This is this is a position whereby the man had fasted for forty days and forty nights. And after 40 days and 40 nights, what presented itself before him, you could have thought that the, that the next thing after your fasting is what? Is for you to receive blessing for testimonies to come. But no, the devil was the one that showed up. It's like David, after David committed the, after David committed the sin with, with uh, 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 Uriah's wife. What happened? While the child was sick, he was, he was doing what? 
He was fasting and praying so that God would not take the life of that child, but God took the life of that child. A lot of you, you make the mistake and you think that fasting is to receive from God. No, fasting is supposed to be a pattern of a believer whereby you just want to abstain yourself from a lot of things that is going on in the world just for you to connect with your believer. Fasting is not for you to say, Lord, I am fasting so that you can take this pain away. I am fasting, Lord, so that you can be able to give me this. No, if that is your, if that is your mentality of fasting, I am telling you today, you will be disappointed. Choice. He come to a stage whereby he was led there and the devil offered him every single thing that he could have offered Jesus Christ, including the whole world. Remember one thing, he was hungry. 40 days and 40 nights, the only thing that you need at that particular time is food. A lot of, listen, let me, let me quickly uh, address this. A lot of the things that we face in life are from a result of our parents, grandparents, uh, our great-great-grandparents that have gone to deities to go and ask for answers to their hunger, whereby the, uh, the, whereby the hunger was quenched for a moment. And they refuse, a lot of them refuse to go back to the deity to go and fulfill what needs to be fulfilled. It's just like the 10 lepers that Jesus healed. Only one came back, and the one that came back was the one that received full, uh, uh, um, full deliverance. The rest night did not receive full deliverance. Because the choices that our parents have made to go and ask for help at the wrong time that they were hungry has put in a lot of us in a situation where we are and a situation whereby we keep finding Christ to take away the pain and the sorrow, to take away the wilderness that we know nothing about. The choices of Jesus Christ here is something that is what emulated in times of hunger. It is hunger that makes a lot of believers to sway away from the tree of life. A lot of pastors, a lot of prophets, a lot, a lot of uh, evangelists, whatever you can call them, the fivefold ministry, a lot of them came, came onto this world with genuine anointing. But you see a lot of people that, that is like, oh, Lord God Almighty, my church is not growing. I only have 15 people. I only have 30 people. Lord, I can see, I can see the redeemed church of Christ. I can see uh, 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 um, uh, uh, people's church, Lord God Almighty. They are 50,000. They are, they, they are 3 million. Give me 3 million. No, no. And because of that, they start going into the tree of knowledge of good and evil to find answers so as to bring people into their congregation. And at that particular time, God has departed away from them because you have, st because you have stood your ground inside the tree of knowledge and uh, of, of the, inside the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That heaven is not there. Heaven has given you 30 to look after. That is the capacity that heaven believes that you can, that, that is the capacity of the anointing on you. And that is the capacity that God believes that you can bring these people along with you to heaven. But no, you intend to make a choice that will not only put you in a state of vulnerability with the devil. Listen, have you ever asked yourself this question? Why is it that when people are doing evil, you intend to say it is the devil? Why then can the devil not help you in that time that it is only the judgment of God that comes alive? The Bible says that the gift of God is without repentance. A lot of pastors, a lot of prophets, they are operating under that anointing of God that the presence of God has left them. Oh, you think that is not possible? It is very possible. God said, God said to Samuel, how long will, you, will it take you to know that I have rejected Saul 
but the anointing of kingship was still on Saul. Saul was still operating on the anointing of kingship, but the presence of God was not there. Listen, God will use anybody, anybody to, to, to attain whatever thing he wants to attain. Spirituality, the choice of life that we make brings a lot of us inside the dungeon of the pit of hell that we make. A lot of you, you have submitted your choices to pastors and prophets. Pastors and prophets that are graceless. Pastors and prophets that do not have the understanding of the word of God. Pastors and prophets that does not even know. You come to them with one problem, they multiply it, they multiply the problem with 10, whereby you, if you had stand right inside the choice of the tree of life, everyone will have opened your eyes to see everything that is going on. Everyone would have. I'm going to tell you this quickly. God is a jealous God. There is no how you will stand yourself inside the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and you make that choice. No matter anything, even what God has given to you. It says the gift of the gift of God is without repentance. What are you talking about? He said once God has given it, God, God cannot take it. Yes, I believe that. But let me tell you the other side of that. The jealousy of God, the jealousy of God can take back what God has given you through the devil if you refuse to make God your number one. God won't take it. There is, there is a system of principles in the spiritual realm that must be followed. Even God Almighty cannot break that system of principles because the devil will look at him and say, Lord, you are a liar. You come into you come into you come into Sunday school uh, Sunday school Bible studies without even rehearsing. I mean, without even uh, uh, reading your Bible, you think that the knowledge the knowledge of you attaining PhD in economics, or you becoming a doctor, or you or you or you having first class in whatever discipline that you have, you think you can use that knowledge to come and uh, uh, to uh, to come and break down the Bible? No. These are the people that brother, that, 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 that brother Paul calls all oh, foolish Galatians. Anybody can get wisdom about the Bible. It's about reading. You can get wisdom. But it takes the Holy Spirit inside you to get understanding. The devil, the devil asks the wisdom about the Bible, but he never had understanding. Let me tell you something. Write it down. This year, 2020, a lot is going to happen in the church that ears will tingle. A lot is going to happen in the church. Men that you, men that you so much look, look up to, men that you see as, oh, they can never do something wrong. Listen, I'm telling you, when heaven exposes a lot of people to you this year, judgment will come on a lot of people. If you are not standing well with your family, as Joshua said, that as for me and my home, we are for Jesus Christ. He said he has set it before you. It is God that set it before you. Life and death. Whatever thing you want to choose, choose it. It's about life. Lastly, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to end with this. Inside making choices, there is one thing that you must always consider. This that you must always consider is what a lot of believers don't have. A lot of believers just believe that if I've done something wrong, I'm just going to kneel down and I'm going to ask for repentance, and that is it. And the word of the Lord in 1 John 1, 9 will be fulfilled. That because I've confessed my sin, it's faithful and just to forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. You are a fool if you think that. That is the truth. I will tell you something today about repentance. When you repent, repentance cannot actually open the door of mercy for you. Let me repeat that. And I'm going to, I'm, and I'm going to explain it. Repentance alone can never open the door of mercy for you and I. 
there is one thing that is inside repentance that a lot of believers refuse to do and whereby mercy sees. And without mercy, I tell you today, I do not care who you are. You could be 10 times or you could be 10 times Baba uh, Deboye, uh, 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 or you could be 10 times MFM. I don't care who you are. There is nobody on this planet for as long as you carry the flesh, you need mercy. Now, what is this thing? This is what a lot of us, a lot of us don't understand. And this is what David, so much good at that God says, this is the man of my heart. A lot of believers don't have brokenness. Without brokenness, without brokenness, if that choice of brokenness is not part of your life, I am telling you today, mercy ceases. And this happens when you have pride. A lot you will see, eh, what are you talking about? You are correcting, who? who are you correcting? I've been in the ministry for 35 years. And so, and so, shut up. You've been in ministry for 35 years and, and, and you don't have understanding about the word of God. Peter followed Jesus Christ. But Paul, but Paul did not follow Jesus Christ. But Paul looked at Peter's face and told Peter and said, you do not understand what circumcision is. Circumcision is of the heart. What are you talking about? You come here to come and tell us about circumcision, about, about uh, 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 circumcision of just uh, 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 cutting the foreskin of the penis. No, that is not circumcision. Circumcision is you have to circumcise your heart. Don't bring, don't bring, don't, if you are not broken, I am telling you today, there's no how you can see the goodness of God. That's why you see people you come all the time, you are, you are always in church, you do this, you do whatever thing you want to do, anything that you want to do, you are, you are the number one there. And your life does not speak of testimony. And Pastor James just called uh, 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 a revival. He called the revival. And you, you brought, you, brought, you, you brought a friend, a friend that you know that all they do is smoke drugs. A friend that you know that everything about their life is upside down. You force them and they, and, and they come into that revival. And brokenness takes them over. And instantly, the Lord turn, turned that life around. And you start looking at the person, ah, how? Me that have been in this church, I'm not saying, no, because you are not broken. Your pride has taken over you. You have, you, you, you have, you have allowed the choice of pride to take over you. Listen to me, church. We are the salt of the earth. That's what Jesus Christ said about us. We should be the epitome of the choices of heaven based on the tree of life. There is nothing in this world that we came in with and there's nothing we're gonna go with. That is why Solomon said everything is vanity upon vanity. But I'm here to tell you today that if Joshua can look at the Israelites and tell them that there's something wrong here, but as for me and my family, we, we are clinging onto Christ. Christ is the answer to all things. Christ is the power to all things. Christ is the eyes to all things. He has never lost a battle and he will never lose it. If the devil can offer Jesus Christ the old earth and he refuses it, think about you and I. Watch the choices that you make in times of hunger. Because those choices that you make in times of hunger, the consequences may be fatal. If not because of yourself, think about the children that God has given unto you to look after. A lot of us, our parents have destroyed destinies that we are, that Christ is not correcting. Are we really going to put our children through that again? To be hungry, 
is not to die. But my prayer is that heaven will not allow you and I to go through the kind of hunger that will make us to step out of the wilderness that will have given us power and blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. That my prayer today is that the wrong choices that you and I have made, that heaven will accept our sincere brokenness repentance and start afresh with you and I in the mighty name of Jesus. That I'm praying today that the choices that our that members of our families that have not given their life to Christ have made, that the Lord God Almighty will give us the zeal to keep praying for them so as for them to make the right choice and come into Christ. That my prayer today is that we understand the tree of life, a tree where everything floweth inside, a tree whereby sicknesses cannot stay in there, a tree where heavenly, our heavenly Father, Christ Jesus, has set the example. Listen, church, please. Let us walk hand in hand together. Let us create a powerful force of the tree of life in this world that we live in. A tree that will be able to take us before the kings and queens and make them to understand that we have made the choice to be for Christ. And it is before our eyes that they will see that indeed Christ is Lord. Thank you for listening. God bless you all. In Jesus' name. Amen.